welcome to uh, another episode of the Three Colts uh, Founder Series. Uh, today we have the pleasure of speaking with Mike Dash, uh, a remarkable entrepreneur who um, has not only sold a, a pretty um, powerful business to Three Colts, but also helps uh, other founders along the journey in terms of selling their, their business uh, to Three Colts. So today we'll dive um, a little bit into his uh, entrepreneurial journey and learn more about his contributions to Three Codes building the most comprehensive marketplace smart uh, management platform. So welcome to uh, to the episode, Mike. How you doing? Good, good. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks for thanks for being here. So I know I just tried to give you a little um, uh, give give the audience a little overview of who you are, but I can never tell them about you better than you can tell them about you. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. So uh, I started in e-commerce back in 2010, actually had uh, my own online store selling aftermarket auto parts. Uh, that's what led me into the call it multi-channel marketplace space, selling direct Amazon, eBay, Walmart, kind of all over the place. Um, we ran into some trouble with customer service. So if anybody's sold auto parts online, they know, uh, you get a lot of questions about whether a specific part fits a specific car. So we were getting messages all the time on all these different platforms, on eBay, on Amazon website, kind of everywhere. Uh, we ended up solving that solution by tying them all into one place for ourselves, not realizing that there was a greater software need there. Eventually, we figured out that other people wanted that solution. So we built Channel Reply, which was the uh, SaaS solution for that problem uh, and scaled that over the past six years. Um, I was introduced to Yoda and the Three Colts team about a year and change ago, uh, and he bought the business. Um, so that was my first foray into the three Colts world. And then, uh, I joined shortly thereafter to lead M and a, uh, with the three Colts team, um, which has been fun. We've done, uh, over 15 acquisitions, uh, and we're, you know, going super fast. Nice. Nice. There's lots of, uh, rich information, uh, in, in that background. So I want to dissect a, a few of the pieces there. Starting off with auto parts. How did you decide I want to sell auto parts? And how did you decide, okay, I'm not going to put up a little store um, over here somewhere in my city, right? But I want to take this to e -com. What was uh, the driver factor there? So I knew I wanted to be in e -com, uh initially. I didn't know what was a good uh, product to sell. Uh, and I had a family friend who had a local auto parts distribution company. Uh, I was introduced to him and he was the one who kind of opened my eyes to the world of auto parts online and showed me some of the other players in the space that were selling and how much they were selling. Uh, so yeah, that's what led us into um, building an auto parts store online. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. And the um, use case for your product started internally, right? So how did that uh, evolve? Okay, so you're like, man, I can't keep up with these messages. I, I'm tired of logging into all these places, right? How did that need evolve into the final product that we see today? Like, what was that journey like? Yeah, so the first thing we wanted to do was integrate eBay with Zendesk. That was like the first challenge because um, that was where the mo most of our messages were coming from was eBay. So uh, we put up a post on Upwork. We found somebody who th said they could do it and we gave them uh, a shot. Took them like three or four different tries on development before actually figuring it out, how to make it work properly. Um, threading, tagging, um, you know, making sure the APIs stayed up. It was a lot of work. Uh, but then when we got it working, it was like, oh, wow, this is incredibly better than trying to manage literally three different computer monitors, one for Amazon, one for eBay, one for our website, it was all being done in one place. So after we got eBay done, uh, next was Amazon. After Amazon was Walmart. So we just slowly did them ourselves. Um, we then 
uh, I think it was one day I was reading a forum online and somebody asked on a Zendesk forum, hey, has anybody solved this problem? They described the problem. It was the problem that we had solved. And I just responded back, yes, uh, we figured it out. Email me. And the guy called me on the phone and he said, hey, uh, you know, I'd love to figure out how you solved it. And I told him and then he said, well, can I pay for it? You just do it for me. And then that was the creation of the business right there. Nice, nice. So that's how you got your first customer. How did you then develop additional traction beyond that? Uh, well, Zendesk is, uh, it was a great place to build on because they have their own app store. Um, and by building an app in their app store, it was instant uh, publicity for us. Um, and once it started to gain traction that people were using it, the Zendesk reps themselves started to tell their customers who would call them and say, hey, we have this problem. We want to solve it. They would say, oh, well, Channel Reply solves the problem. Just install the app. Um, we expanded out from Zendesk by integrating into Gorgeous and uh, Freshdesk and Help Scout, you know, all the other ones we integrate with. So it was a, a natural progression of advertising through our partners. So we're, we're a big believer of partnerships. Yeah. How was it like building that ecosystem of partners? Uh, I mean, I found it super important. It was where we drove all of our customer growth. Um, and, you know, as long as we remained a good partner to them and maintaining the uh, uptime serviceability and making sure our customers were happy, they were thrilled that we were solving a massive problem for them, right? They didn't want to have to integrate with, Amazon, eBay, Walmart, Etsy, all these marketplaces, because it's very difficult. The APIs are hard. They break often and, you know, they have to dedicate a team to do so by outsourcing it to us. It was a way for them to give their customers what they wanted and, and have a, a, a solution like ours solve that need. That makes sense. How did you even get in the door? Like, that's a lot of help desk to, to partner with. Like, how did you broker? Um, the funny thing was most came to us. So when they okay. saw us doing well on a competitor site, they would come to us and say, hey, can you build this integration for us too? We have customers asking for it. And then for us, it would be like, oh, more customers. Yeah, absolutely. You know, send us over the API keys. Give us a test account. We'll get this going. We can get it live in two to three months and we would get it live and we would ask them, send it in a newsletter, promote it on a blog, and then they would do it for us. Solid, solid, solid. Okay. That sounds like a, that's a very nice growth story, growth via partnerships. Now, um, I'm sure there are a lot of these moments, uh, getting acquired being one of them. Putting that aside, what would you say was the thing that you were proudest of in the channel reply journey? Um, I mean, there were a bunch. I think once we got our first hundred customers, I was pretty shocked. Um, then 500, then 1,000, then 2,000, and like the milestones of getting a lot of customers using the solution uh, was huge for us. Um, we presented at, at Salesforce one year. So uh, we integrate with... Um, uh, what used to be desk.com, which was bought by Salesforce. Um, so we were asked to present one year there, same with Zendesk. So we were getting a lot of accolades about the product and the usability and people rave about it and how well it worked and, you know, how it solved this huge need in the market. So, you know, having all of those together was great. Um, our team was, was awesome, worked really well together. Uh, like the vibe was great. So, you know, it was a lot of big little moments, I, I guess you can call it, um, yeah. in in the in the journey. Yeah. How about uh, on the flip side of things, the nasty aspects of running a business? What what would you say was the biggest challenge? Uh, uh, the hardest think. part was definitely keeping up with the API changes and requests that come along with managing a marketplace company. Um, they break constantly. You know, eBay changes their APIs regularly and doesn't tell you about the changes that they're about to make. So it breaks the whole app. And then you have 500 customers complaining to you. Why am I not getting my messages? No. And especially with Amazon, Amazon's super important because if you don't respond within a certain amount of time, you can actually get dinged on your account. So it was a lot of pressure on us to constantly have the APIs up and running because you could literally 
possibly get someone suspended if you you weren't best in class with making sure that the API uptime was there. So that was probably the hardest dealing with customers. I would imagine that's probably mostly the case, um, you know, but we did a very good job of making sure customers were happy. Yeah. So did you let the auto parts business go? Or you continue to operate that as channel reply group? That company was acquired in 2016. So 2016, um, we had a, a, a private equity company who was in the aftermarket auto parts space that wanted to get online. So we sold that business to them and we carved out the software that we had built through that business to let us run on the side. Nice, nice, nice. Wow. You are a um, two-time uh, 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 exeter. <laughs> I guess is that the right term? Yeah, uh, two-time yeah founder acquisition seller. I guess. I, yeah. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. So I guess uh, when you came into the uh, three Colts um, acquisition process, you're probably a little bit seasoned in in that regard. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that experience? Yeah. So um, I had been through uh, the first acquisition of my e-commerce company, and then I had been in, through an acquisition with three Colts. So I had two. I you know didn't mention this, but in the meantime, while I was building my software company, I was also working at a, a large software company called Yapo, um, where I also was a part of three different M&A uh, transactions that happened um, as well. So I had been around M&A uh, and I, I, I tell everybody this, I had never experienced an M&A process as smooth uh, as yeah, three calls. Um, it was the easiest process I've ever been through. It was founder friendly. Um, there was really no headaches. Like I couldn't believe honestly how smooth it went. And I think that was the major driver for me wanting to join and continue that journey for other founders and make it really easy for them to exit their companies and come on board with the company. Um, if anybody's dealt with investment bankers or private equity or brokers, um, the process could be arduous, long, and painful. Um, most don't have a very good experience. So to be able to give people that experience was was huge. Um, that was yeah. a, a major impetus for me joining. Yeah. To any founders watching, do you think you can uh, shed some more light on what that process kind of looks like uh, in the three colds world? Yeah. So if, uh, if we, uh, we identify a company that we think is a good fit for three cults, um, you know, both ways, right? If the company can fit well into the Three Colts culture, if Three Colts thinks that the company uh, can provide valuable assets to its customer base, um, you know, we'll have a preliminary call, um, describe the process. We'll then look at financials of the company, simple P&L, balance sheets, some obfuscated customer data that can show us growth rates and churn and stuff. Uh, we'll do some product demo with the company, learn more about it, and then we'll turn around and offer generally in three to five business days. So it's very quick. If we think that we uh, like a company and we want to buy it, um, we'll prevent, present an offer, which will then come in the form of an LOI. We sign that LOI. We go into a due diligence period, which is only 45 days. So it's very quick. Uh, and then we close. And then we integrate the business into the Three Colts uh, umbrella. Nice, nice, nice. So how involved are you with um, Channel Reply post, uh, post acquisition? Um, you know, I'm there just to bounce ideas off of, but I don't run the day to day anymore. Uh, that's been transitioned over, which three Colts is very good at taking a business and transitioning it in. Uh, it's still growing very nicely. It's a really good product. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, uh, it's something that I'll always keep an eye on just because, you know, most founders refer to their businesses as their babies. So you like to yes. see them kind of progress. Uh, but I don't manage the day to day of the business. Okay, sounds good. And how has um, Three Colts kind of integrated the business into the wider marketplace management platform picture? Yeah, I mean, it's a vital piece uh, of the puzzle for a marketplace management platform. If you're selling on the marketplaces, you need to provide you know top-level customer service. So Channel Reply is a great solution to provide that customer service for your marketplace. Um, you know, your marketplace selling. Uh, so it was an easy integration into the rest of the products, right? Being able to offer customer service and support at a high scale and high level uh, for these sellers. So it's a natural fit. Solid, solid, solid. Sounds good. Well, you make it sound um, 
very pleasant to, to come do business with, uh, with, with Three Colts. Um, and as the man spearhead in this, I feel like we're Three Colts is in the right hands in the sense of, look, you've been through this journey a few times before. You know what it takes to make the process of, um, what is it, palatable for a founder, right? So um, founders, if you're listening, Mike, Mike is your guy. So, uh, (laughs) well, that's uh, why we're able to have this founder series, right? I don't think other founders would sign up for it and agree to it if we didn't have a good experience with them. So, yeah, that is very, very true. That is very, very true. So, um, with respect to anyone else, um, who's looking to embark on uh, on like an entrepreneurial journey, right? Because one thing that I'm learning from, uh, doing these founder interviews is that it all starts from identifying a problem that is very specific to you, right? Um, now, there are a lot of people who see problems in their day-to-day operations. A lot of them don't take the leap to build businesses around it, right? What kind of advice would you give to, to someone in that position? Yeah, I would say, you know, if, if you've solved a unique problem for your business, you know, the first thing to do is easily just Google like, do other people have this problem, right? You could find forums, blogs, Reddit posts. Um, there's like a million channels out there to figure out if other people have this problem. And the chances are they do. Uh, if it's a big enough problem that you think you can solve, um, try to contact someone and see if they'd pay for it. Now, if they'd pay, if one person will pay for the problem, there's probably a lot of other people out there that will also. That's your step into creating a company that could service others. Actually, let me ask you how you see um, the future of Three Goals, right? Because you lead the acquisitions, um, you you get a firsthand view into the entire the entire puzzle, right? Where mm-hmm. do you see um, uh, the marketplace management solution evolve? Yeah, we really like to be the back end operating system of a marketplace seller. So. Um, you know, we love, uh, order management, inventory management, um, you know, feed synchronization, reporting, analytics, ERP, fulfillment, uh, you know, really makes a company kind of, uh, like the gears grind on the back end. Um, you know, I think that's the direction of three cults, like where we're headed. We have a lot of operational founders that have run Amazon and eBay marketplace businesses, um, I think most would agree that that's what makes a business tick and that's where we want to be. We want to be that back end operational infrastructure, uh, support for sellers. Um, that's, that's the direction I see three cults continuing to head as a business. Solid, solid. Um, I know you can disclose, uh, but any exciting things in the pipeline for you right now? Uh, yeah, we have a lot. We have a lot of founders that we're talking to a lot of really interesting businesses, um, that are in that vein. And, um, you know, we'll continue to pursue um, more businesses that make it easy for our sellers to continue to grow their businesses. Solid, solid, solid. Well, I appreciate your time, Mike. Uh, this was a very great uh, conversation. Um, two exits. <laughs> That's no small feat. Uh, so congrats to you. Uh, thank you. Well done over there. And thank you for all the work that you're doing at Three Colts uh, to continue to help build uh, uh, the marketplace management platform. Absolutely. Uh, it's fun. It's, it's great working with everybody at the company. It's a, it's a good environment. So good stuff. Good stuff. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mike. I appreciate it. Appreciate it, it guys. All right. Cheers.